All right, in this video, we're going to show how to repair an LG Flatron L227WTG that has no power. This particular unit, if you apply a power cord to it and press the power button, you get no power at all, no flash of the power button, no flash of the screen, totally dead unit. Um, we're going to show you how to take it apart and do the repair on it. First, of course, we've removed the stand power and signal cables from the unit. Next thing we need to do, turn the unit over, remove the four mounting screws from the center of the unit. These are the screws that you would use if you are wall mounting the unit. turn the unit back over and now we'll remove the bezels and the uh, plastic case of the unit. Easiest way to do that is either the top or the bottom, grab in the center, lift it up a little bit and kind of give it a, a flex twist and then it'll start removing and popping the little catches loose and then you just work your way around. to the front panel it's going to operate the same way you just need to be a little bit more careful because there is some electronics behind it and you don't want to pull the, the bezel off we actually have to turn the unit over and remove the back first the reason we have to do that is because the control panels are mounted to the front of the board but are connected to the electronics so we could not remove the panel from the front panel until we unplug the controls. This is the center control, or one towards the center of the monitor. It's the one we need to unplug. Then we need to remove the two pieces of tape that hold on the RF shield. Remove that shield, set it to the side. Unplug our four backlights. There's a pink, white, and a blue black on the top and on the bottom. Um, when you unplug these little plugs, there's a little plastic catch that needs to be squeezed for the plug to be released. So we'll do that on those two and then on the next two. Um, next thing to do is remove the RF shielding tape from the sides of the metal enclosure here. And we can kind of lift it up a little bit and what you're going to want to do is kind of leave it in place and rotate it a little bit. Um, this is the board that we're going to be working on, so we need to remove the screws for that. Okay, when you're lifting the board out, um, the plastic bracket that the board is mounted on also has a clip for the small screw, uh, small signal cables over here. So you need to work those through that little plastic catch before you can remove the board. Uh, next thing is to release the power cable that goes from the board to the video controller card. It again is a squeeze and release connector. So you need to squeeze the little clamp, and then you should be able to work the plug free. And there we have the power board. And on this one, quite obviously, these four larger capacitors and the small capacitor, and all of them located in the corner, are very evidently bulged. Um, it's best to go ahead and replace the other two smaller capacitors while you're in the unit instead of having to go back into it you know in a month or two when they fail because if these are failing this bad the other ones are going to be close to failure so let's take it over to the soldering station replace those and see if we can get the board up and going again